Welcome, friends, to the broadcast. I'm so glad that you're here today. I have a great friend, Dr. Delron Shirley. He's the head of Teach All Nations Ministries, and him and his wife, Peggy, have traveled all over the world preaching the gospel. We're gonna be talking about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and world missions all week, so you don't want to miss today's program. Thanks so much, and blessings. Friends, it's so good to have you with us today, and I have a very special friend, Dr. Delron Shirley. And Dr. Shirley was actually the Dean of Students at World Harvest Bible College, Yes, uh, Dr. Lester Sumrall's Bible School uh, when I went there, Yeah, and uh, graduated in 1988. Oh my Lord, and that <laughs> seems had, like a long time ago. Had a great time uh, uh -huh. with you, and I appreciated you and Peggy. And uh, then I went to Kit Carson and started mm -hmm. the church where you ministered uh, for me a number of times. And then uh, I got my bachelor's degree while I was in Kit Carson yes. by correspondence, but they changed the name to Indiana Christian University. Right. Yes. And then uh, after we were in Kit Carson for 13 years, pastoring Church of the Redeemed, which a group of believers and Barbara and I started uh, and pioneered in Kit Carson, we moved to Colorado Springs and started Karis Christian Center, and it wasn't too many years after we started that you came here yes. uh, to Colorado Springs and uh, began to work some with Andrew Womack, and uh, and now you're part of our church and you do missions all over the world. Yes. And so I ask you if we could have a week and just talk about missions and just talk mm -hmm. about sharing the gospel. And I know you've, how many nations have you been to? Uh, about 70. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh -huh. So that's that's really awesome. Yes. And you know, when I was just like a senior in high school, uh, right after that, I went on my first mission trip to Jamaica, mm -hmm. and it really put a heart in me for the world. And so thank God we get yeah. to share the gospel all around the world. It's exciting. And these are the last days. Jesus said that uh, the gospel would be shared, or the gospel would be preached, uh, into every nation before that he would return. Yeah. And I'm just excited to be part Amen. of that last wave. Amen. You know, Dr. Summerall really talked about two things happening mm -hmm. in the last times. He said there would be a great revival. Mm -hmm. And the Bible talks about that in the scripture that you just mentioned, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. This gospel mm -hmm. of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations and then shall the end come. It also talks about it in Acts chapter 2, right, uh, verse 17, God mm -hmm. said he would pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. And so on one side, there's a great revival, but mm -hmm. there's also an apostasy. Right. In 1 Timothy, I believe it's chapter 4, verse oh. 1, says in last times, perilous times shall come. Mm -hmm. And some will depart from the faith, mm -hmm. uh, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And so we see both of those things happening mm -hmm. parallel. Mm -hmm. In fact, right in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, right before Jesus said, this gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, he said that there would be some because of iniquity would abound, the love of many would wax cold. Yeah. So you don't get hard just immediately, but it's a process exactly. if you harden your heart to the Spirit of God. So we don't want to do that. We want to no. let God have his way. Amen. So share a few things about the gospel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, well, if you don't mind, uh, I know we're talking about missions, but uh, I want to share a story uh, that really started my entire ministry. And this was uh, when I was a student at North Carolina State University. Um, my, my childhood desire was to be a chemist. And uh, <laughs> so I excelled in chemistry all through high school and uh, was given uh, special awards and different things within the chemistry around. Anyway, and so I went to North Carolina State University uh, with a specialized chemistry program. Um, but uh, one of the things that uh, I really wanted to do 
was to maintain my faith while I was at campus at a secular university. And so the first thing that we did is I found a church to attend. Right. Um, and the interesting thing is that one of the members of that church was a, uh, a professional chemist. He was a doctor in chemistry, and uh, he was a research uh, scientist at the Research Triangle. If you know anything about North Carolina, no. um, there are three major universities, and, and in between those is an area where that a lot of companies do research calling on the professors from the and different they call universities. It the triad or yes. something. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, so he was a research chemist uh, in the research triangle. And uh, so he like became my idol, you know, because he was everything I wanted to be. <laughs> and uh, so he volunteered to come pick me up every Sunday and take me to church. That's amazing. So the first Sunday we're going to church, 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm standing on the curb in front of the dorm waiting for him to come pick me up. And here I am, I have on a suit and a tie, which I'm not wearing today, but a suit and a tie, <laughs> and, uh, and my Bible under my arm. And uh, one of the guys from the dorm walked by and he says, so, so where are you going? And uh, I said, uh, uh, out. Now, after he walked <laughs> away, I thought, you know, how dumb. I mean, it's <laughs> 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. I'm wearing a suit and a tie, and I've got a Bible under my arm. And where do you think you're going to go look, looking like that? You know? And uh, so I decided, hey, you know, you can't hide it, so you might as well decide not to be ashamed of the gospel. Amen. You know, Romans 1.16, yeah. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is Amen. the uh, power of God unto salvation. So anyway, so between that Sunday and the next, I determined to find that guy and ask him to if he'd like to come to church with me the next week. And sure enough, he did. And then the next week, we had a couple more guys from the dorm. And in just a few weeks down the road, uh, we had to recruit another car because we filled up the professor's car. And That's then we had to awesome. get a second car to bring people. And before long... Uh, the, we had so many students from the university coming to church that the pastor said, we've got to start a whole new Sunday school class just for the college students. That's great. And then <laughs> back at the campus, we started having prayer meetings and Bible studies on campus. And uh, before long, we had hundreds of students that were involved. The movement actually expanded to 22 different campuses Oh, that's and great. Uh, we had hundreds of students that got born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, many of them healed, and uh, a lot of them actually, uh, instead of pursuing their uh, secular education that they had come for, wound up going to Bible college or seminary and are pastors all over the world. Um, and the whole thing started just because that I decided hey, I am not going to be ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Now, Delron, uh, so many people today seem like they're afraid of like a secular university. And all of my children mm -hmm. uh, went to secular university. So Aaron went to Carnegie Mellon mm -hmm. and uh, then and got his undergrad. Mm -hmm. And he got that in administration and business and music. And then he went to... Uh, Rice University in Houston and got his master's and doctorate. Right. And um, in a little bit of time after Aaron was at Carnegie Mellon, he found the right church and God mm -hmm. directed him and he was a big witness there and took different people with him at different times. In fact, he still got a great relationship with the leadership in that church. Mm -hmm. And he had to ride a, two buses. It took him an hour and a half to get church. Oh. But they would, they would drive him back home, uh -huh. the pastor's mom or a good friend of hers, and she's up in her 90s still loving and serving Jesus. We actually sent her an offering a while back, but she's just doing really, really well. She's been one of the leaders in the nation in the globe. And then when he went to Rice University, um, what, just like you're talking, one of the uh, people on campus, he's a uh, in science or something, and he's he's got his doctorate. He's one of the leading scientists in the world. In fact, mm -hmm. they write about him all around the world, and he's He's Jewish, but he received Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so every Sunday, he hosts a group of students at his house. And he uh, 
feeds them lunch after church. So uh-huh. he invites them to church with him. So just the same thing that you experienced, and you're talking about 22 campuses. And I know it wasn't very many years ago that I heard about a place in Texas where they're having like 50,000 students come together on a Tuesday evening mm-hmm. for a Bible study, mm-hmm. for all from different churches to yeah. worship Jesus. Yes. And so at the same point in time where there is apostasy, Yes. There is great revival, mm-hmm. and there's great revival around the world today, yeah. but we've got to keep sharing Jesus. Right. We can't be ashamed of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, we hear a lot about, uh, um, you know, the coming outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and you mentioned already Acts chapter 2, where it says he poured out his Spirit upon all flesh. You know, I have been privileged to be in two wonderful waves of the move of the Spirit. Amen. Uh, And uh, one of them was what I was talking about at the university, uh, and that was what we call the Jesus Movement. And uh, many people have seen the film that was out recently, The Jesus Revolution. Well, I actually knew some of the people that were in that (laughs) film. I mean, not in the film, but the real people that the film was made about. Right. Uh, and, uh, And that Jesus Revolution, Jesus Movement, uh, it started almost spontaneously, and it was something that was phenomenal that people couldn't expect, people couldn't explain, uh, but it was just an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And then I've seen the same thing happen in the nation of Nepal, um, where that uh, it was a Hindu nation, and people were forbidden to share the gospel, forbidden to even own Bibles. Uh, I knew people who were thrown in jail just for owning a Bible, not because that they were preaching from the Bible or trying to convert other people, but they just crazy. found a, they just found a Bible in their home, and they were thrown in jail. The sentence for owning a Bible was six years, and then uh, after six years, you would be released. And if they caught you again, then you could be thrown in possibly for the rest of your life. There was it was undetermined, but anyway. When we first started going to Nepal, uh, the people there told me that uh, they could remember the time when there were only five Christians in the nation, five Christians in the entire nation. And then in 1990, God just opened the door and the Spirit of God poured out on that nation. People were getting born again every day, all the time. And uh, it became the fastest growing church in the world. Uh, And all the Christian magazines were talking about the revival or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was happening in that nation. And, um, you know, so twice I have been privileged to see from zero to exponential growth uh, in the body of Christ in, uh, you know, because God poured out his spirit. Because the, the spirit of God, Mm-hmm. is still moving yeah. on the on the face of the earth. So we're going to take a short break, and we're going to come back uh, after this. We're going to talk more about yeah. this. In fact, I went to Nepal with you. Yes, you did. I believe it was in the late 1990s. Uh, and there were about 30 of us, and you had us going all kinds of different places, uh-huh. and there were thousands and thousands of Christians. Yes. So this is great. So we're going to come back uh, in just a, a few seconds, and we'll be back, and we'll be sharing more Uh, about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and what God is doing on the earth in these last days. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Blessings. Friends, we've been sharing about world missions, but we could not effectively reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ without the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so our special offer this week is Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We have downloadable audios and downloadable videos on our website, absolutely free. Blessings. So Pastor Lawson and the Pastor Aaron's are teaching on on faith and who we are. So the foundation has has been so solid since we are here. So it's been growing steadily the foundation in Jesus, and on top of that, skill set increasing by serving with joy is the best thing you can do. Yes.
Friends, we're back, and again, I'm so happy to have Dr. Delron Shirley, uh, my good friend and uh, minister of the gospel, and uh, he began to talk about how God is pouring out of his spirit and how um, he was involved in revival. Now, what years was that in the when you were involved in uh, in your college in the Jesus movement? That was the 1970s, okay. the very end of the 60s, the 70s. And then, um, you know, that, that Jesus movement revival uh, went through the 70s, and then the charismatic movement uh, uh, that where a lot of denominational churches were being filled with the Holy Spirit kind of came on the heels of that and right. then went through the 80s. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was actually baptized in the Holy Spirit in 1978 right. in the charismatic movement, mm -hmm. and I came out of a traditional church. Yes. And uh, my grandparents had actually start, helped start that church years and years before. And Andrew Womack came to town when nobody knew Andrew Womack. And uh, he was a Baptist that had been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Right. And um, he, he had a Bible study, and it was in a, a, one of my family's friend's house. Mm -hmm. And then it moved to my aunt's house. And mm -hmm. it was just a couple of months after I started attending that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I knew immediately when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit that I was called into the ministry. Mm -hmm. I was just 14 years old. So that was 45 years ago as we speak today. Uh -huh. And uh, the, the Holy Spirit revolutionized my life. Yeah. And praise God, the Holy Spirit will do that. Amen. Praise God. And then yeah. uh, ended up going to Dr. Summerall's Bible School and graduating in 1988 where you were the dean then and then moving to eastern Colorado, very mm -hmm. small town, mm -hmm. Kit Carson, where we pastored for 13 years. And then we moved here to Colorado Springs and started again. And then you uh, came here. Yeah. And now you're part of the of the work here in Colorado Springs. And we appreciate you yeah. and your wife, Peggy, so much. But you were talking about Nepal. Yeah. And uh, the move of the Holy Spirit and what God's doing. And I went mm -hmm. there uh, with you in the late uh -huh. 1990s. Right. And uh, there were about 30 of us on that trip. Yes. And you had us going, you know, uh, two or three places a day and exactly. preaching and sharing and ministering to people. And people were being healed. And mm -hmm. uh, it was amazing yes. to see mm -hmm. the move of the Holy Spirit. And I'm, I'm amazed at the move of the Holy Spirit. Today. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing what uh -huh. God does. It just... It's, it's never ceases to get old to me. No, 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 no. But anyway, we were, we were sharing about that. And, um, and I had uh, you know, mentioned to you that I had been in two tremendous outpourings of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the one when, uh, during the college uh, years, the Jesus movement, and then also uh, what happened in Nepal. And uh, I really anticipate that we can see that happen more and more and more. I mean, Amen. we started with nothing, right. and it exploded uh, right. in both nations. This both, is encouraging. On the college campus <laughs> and in the nation of Nepal. And I, a lot of people look at the world today, and they say, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And they talk about all the bad things and all the right. liberal issues and all the uh, ungodly rules and regulations and laws that are being put in place and et cetera. But, uh, you know, God can start just like that and now, turn it all around. Yeah, he can. And, you know, this brings something up. Yeah. I was in Dr. Sumrall's church when I was going to Bible school, and this was November of 1987. Okay. And he said two things. And sometimes he said, I predict. But in these two things, he didn't say, I predict. He said, this is what's going to happen. He said, number one, in 1988, he said, the high are going to be uh, brought low yeah. and the low are going to be exalted. He said, it will happen in the government and in the church. And we saw that happen. But he said this also, November of 1987. He said, the Iron Curtain is going to fall. Yes. Now, we were at the height of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. You were probably in that service. It was a Sunday morning. It was like 2,500 or 3,000 people right. there. It's like he poured ice water on all of them <laughs> because it was so opposite yes. of what we saw happening mm -hmm. in the natural. Mm -hmm. But he, he, then he said, what is wrong with you people? Yeah. And, and he, just, he just, it was so real to him. Yeah. It was such a revelation to him. Well, I sat in a meeting mm -hmm. in, in August of this past year 
And Andrew Womack said, by 2026, there will be such a change in this nation and we will be going back to conservative principles. And it was like, I'm thinking, yeah. What is he smoking? <laughs> what's, what's Andrew? Of course, Andrew don't smoke nothing. Yeah, right. you know? yeah exactly. And what's he drinking? He don't drink nothing. He yeah, won't yeah. even drink coffee. But, but you know, I'm thinking that because it's so opposite of what we were seeing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we're beginning to see already change. But I was reminded of when Dr. Sumrall said that. And I said, I said, you know what? This could be God speaking. And I know uh, there's great revival uh, Iraq. Yes. We've Iraq, sown a yeah. lot of seed into uh, the Terry Law, his yeah. son Jason, and uh, literally paid for thousands and thousands of Bibles that they yeah. smuggled in. And they're seeing a huge yeah. uh, outpouring of the Spirit, people being saved and coming to Christ. I, I hear they're closing mosques. Yes. And churches are exploding. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. praise God for this outpouring of the Spirit yeah. that, mm -hmm. that God is doing. And you know, I think the devil meant for COVID to try to shut the church down. I've heard some terrible things like the average church is down 40% uh, numerically today. But Barbara got a vision of uh, like tidal waves coming from the oceans to all the continents yes. of the world, a move of the spirit. And then in the middle of continents, like geysers shooting up an outpouring of the spirit at the beginning mm -hmm. of this. And mm -hmm. I really believe that the best is yet to come. Amen. I do too. Yeah. You were talking about Iraq uh, and Iran is, uh, we're working with uh, Christians in Iran and they're telling us that the mosques are empty. The this only, is wonderful. Yeah, the only people that go to the mosque are the very old, you know, that have just grown up at it, <laughs> you know, but the, uh, uh, but the mass of the population do not attend and I said, no. so when they have the call to worship, um, you know, in a lot of countries like in Egypt and everything, everything just kind of stops. People fall down right in the middle of the street and start doing their prayers. And uh, they said, well, you know, some people uh, will go to the mosque when they hear the call to prayer, but most people just carry on with their own business. You know? <laughs> This is great. Yeah. There, the government is very strong against Christianity, uh, you know. But that is just the people in charge, right. and they're going to age out soon. And Hallelujah. the new people that are going to come up are coming from a totally new perspective, and we're going to see a turnaround in many, many nations around the world. Amen. Uh, you know, Aaron. Uh, my son yeah. is very prophetic, and he stood on my stage in a prophetic meeting, not, mm -hmm. you know, three, probably three years ago. Mm -hmm. And he said, there's going to be a great revival mm -hmm. among the Arab nations. Yes. And now we're hearing this yeah. in the Middle East, and you're telling me more yeah. than I, I heard some about Iraq because we work, you know, with... Uh, uh, World Compassion yes, yes. and, and uh, Terry Law and now uh -huh. Jason Law, his son. Yeah. And uh, praise God. It's great to see mm -hmm. these good reports happening all around the world Amen. of people coming to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But if we can go back to the, to the move in Nepal. Yes. Um, you know, one of the things that I saw in Nepal that I believe is foundational for any move of the Spirit is intercession. Uh, in 1986, this is six years before my first trip to Nepal, um, I met a man, a Nepali man, and uh, here in the U.S., and uh, he said, uh, you need to pray for our people right. because that they are totally oppressed. There's no freedom of religion, and, and I already shared about how people were thrown in jail just for owning mm -hmm. Bibles, etc. And uh, so, um, you know, he said, pray. And uh, so I diligently began to pray right. uh, deliberately every day for freedom of religion in Nepal. And uh, uh, it was four years later in 1990, uh, there was, a, I guess you would essentially call it a bloodless coup, but the people wanted a democratic government. And the king had actually been educated in the West. And so he was a little bit more sympathetic than you might've thought, but anyway, uh, and so he granted uh, a new constitution, democratic constitution, 
And one of the elements was freedom of religion. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was thinking about this scripture, actually, when I was thinking about having you. This is one of the scriptures, but in Acts chapter 2, verse 8, the scripture says, Ask of me, mm -hmm. and I will give you the heathen mm -hmm. for your inheritance. Mm -hmm. And so thank God we can still ask God. Yeah. And, and, and God's inheritance yes. is the people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Bible says in James chapter 5 that the Lord has great patience you know, for the fruit, the precious fruit mm -hmm. of the earth. So we've just got a little bit. Before we go off uh, today, Dr. Shirley, would you uh, say a prayer for the people that are watching? Yes. A prayer of encouragement. Yes. Whatever you feel directed. Okay. Father, I would just pray for everybody that is tuned in today that uh, you would move on their hearts to understand what it is that you want to do around the world. You have a desire for the nations of the world to come to you. And Father, we just know, Lord, that there are many that uh, are going to be called, that are going to go out and share, maybe with their neighbors, like uh, even when I talked about the, on the college campus, maybe they're going to go to the distant nations of the world. Maybe they're going to just become prayer warriors and intercessors. Maybe they're going to become givers and finance other people to go. But Father, you said that if we ask, ask of you that you will give us the nations for our inheritance. And I thank you, Lord, that that's not just something for Pastor Lawson and for me, but it's for every believer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, friends, for being a part of the broadcast. You can watch this again actually on our website at karischristiancenter.com where we have actually hundreds of hours of downloadable teaching and video that you can get and see a lot of different materials. And we have many, many things that are free. Or if you need to call for prayer, call right now. Blessings. Every born again believer should be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus commanded his disciples not to depart from Jerusalem until they had received power from on high. If the Acts 2 Church needed the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we still need it today. We'd like to bless you with a digital copy of the teaching, The Outpouring of the Holy Spirit, a $25 value free of charge. Download it today at charischristiancenter.com. Hey everyone, I wanted to invite you to a Karis East Coast Camp Meeting at Grace Life Church, Pastor Brian and Ashley Clark. I'll be there. Pastor Max Cornell will be there. It's going to be great in Greensboro, North Carolina, October 18th through the 20th. If you're in that area, we would love to see you there. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.